Most operating systems aren't anonymous. Hell, most don't do the bare minimum of not tracking you. Today I'm going to share three of the world's most anonymous operating systems for people needing the highest degrees of protection. Tails OS is a Linux distribution which runs as a live operating system, meaning it's never installed on your computer, but rather on removable storage, like a flash drive, which you boot into from any system. Now, I really like live operating systems, not even necessarily from a privacy and security perspective, but just from a usability perspective. For example, I can carry a flash drive that has Ventoy OS and this can hold like five different live OS's or however many I want and then the other one can run Tails OS and so um, anywhere I'm in public on any computer I can boot into an operating system of my choice which is really cool just from a pure usability perspective so I really like live operating systems aside from their design use case of testing Linux. By default, Tails OS is non-persistent, so any installations, files, settings, or other changes you make are automatically wiped when you shut down, where the flash drive returns to factory defaults. What really separates Tails is its integration with countless anonymity tools and configurations to make you blend in with everyone else using it. Everything from software updates to your web traffic is routed through the Tor network. Your device's unique MAC address is spoofed by default and includes a tool that strips metadata from any file, as well as countless other tools you can dig into. Now, the anonymity of Tails OS is pretty unique. So traditionally, when you use the Tor browser, you are anonymous within that session, and you're pretty much getting two layers of protection. Everything you're doing is routed through the Tor network, which a lot of people seem to understand. But the other very important piece is that every Tor browser user is meant to look the same. So it looks like it's the same person who's accessing the Tor network. The Tor browser is then effectively a tool that accomplishes two things. It's designed to make people look the same and then it routes you through the Tor anonymity network. Tails OS is special because it extends that protection onto an operating system basis. Just to summarize that, if you run like a normal operating system like Windows, Fedora, or whatever you want through Tor, you kind of get half of Tor's protection in a way you're missing out on the blending in with everyone else aspect of Tor, which might be fine for certain threat models, but Tails OS does kind of both things, where it blends you in and it routes you through Tor. All these attributes make Tails OS one of the best choices for users needing the highest degree of anonymity, all in a package that fits in your pocket. Next is Hoonix, an OS with the goal of anonymity and security, but originally with an emphasis on being a virtual machine. A virtual machine is an operating system that runs virtually on top of your normal operating system in real time. Virtual machines are awesome and they're actually, again, kind of like live operating systems, a staple just for my usability. Um, I can have different virtual machines for different workflows and different purposes for different threat models. If there's something that needs a little bit more security, I can make sure I have my downloads and things that are a little bit riskier done inside a virtual machine. Uh, I can have a virtual machine designed for a pseudonym. I can have a virtual machine for really anything I want. So it's cool to have Hunix run as one of these because then it's just one more virtual machine and an already uh, extensive uh, sandbox that you have available to you. This is nice as it reserves anonymity only for when you need it on your normal system, not all the time. While this is their most popular offering, Hunix recently introduced a live version similar to Tails, so we have a little competition here. If you're wondering how Hunix compares to Tails, especially the live versions, ultimately it's complicated and really depends on your needs. But despite this comparison coming from Hunix, it's pretty darn objective and honest about each OS, so we encourage using this chart to compare Hunix to Tails after the video is done to see which is better for you. Now a few honorable mentions, but mainly a quick note before I cover the last and final operating system. I wanna mention that most people who watch this likely don't need to be using these powerful operating systems 24 seven, and most of you can probably just get away with using them just for specific use cases that need their safety. And I don't really believe in black and white privacy. I think that there are specific situations where you need more privacy and more security and some situations where you don't, and it's fine to make that compromise compromise when you can. If you can't make that compromise, then yeah, don't make the compromise. But again, this is why it's a pretty individual journey. And I try to stay away from the black and white mentality I often see in the privacy world. As an extension of that, I wanna mention and call out just using the Tor browser on your standard operating system already offers a huge layer of protection within that operating system, especially if you're keeping everything you're doing inside the browser. And so your honorable mentions 
do ultimately come down to things like Fedora, OpenSUSE, Arch, and most other Linux distributions that allow you to use this incredible Tor browser in a fairly safe and privacy respecting environment that should fit most people's threat models more than enough. Again, if you need more, then that's why I'm covering these more extensive options, but sometimes don't forget the basics because for a lot of you, that might actually be more than enough. Now, the final operating system is unique for a big reason. It's designed to be used as a daily operating system. Cubes is based on Zen and Fedora with the goal of security by virtualizing pretty much everything as its own compartment. Out of the box, Cubes doesn't inherently offer greater degrees of anonymity, compared to your typical OS at least, but that quickly changes when you begin looking at the VM options within Cubes, including an option for Tor VM, and yes, a Hunix one as well. So if you liked Hunix, but want Hunix to run on top of a much more secure and trusted operating system, Cubes is the way to go as it combines all the positives of Hunix, but on top of a more secure OS. The cool thing is while Cubes is a bit clunky to use, it's not super unrealistic for technical folks to use it. Well, folks, 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 technical folks. It's not super unrealistic for technical folks to use it as a main OS day to day. It allows you to easily keep things like Hunix safely reserved for when you actually need the anonymity, and it gives you the option to use normal things day to day that don't need the anonymity. And a quick note on Cubes, aside from it being seen as a privacy and security tool, similar to virtual machines, this compartmentalization is actually a really cool use case and usability tool. So you can have like whole businesses run on just one VM in Cubes, or you can have video production. I wouldn't recommend producing videos in Cubes. I think that's insane, but like as an example, you can have like straight up workflows in your life only done in a single part of Cubes, and Cubes is from a usability perspective, allows you to do that very cleanly. Nate, who I co-host on Surveillance Support, is a big shill of Cubes and uses it for a ton of things, and he says for usability. What's the question? Uh, I'm, I'm recording something. What do, what do you like about cubes? Why do you use it? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I, I enjoy the isolation. Um, I enjoy that it makes it really easy to keep track of multiple accounts, uh, like multiple signal accounts, multiple matrix accounts. I don't have to use different matrix clients. I can use the same client over and over. Um, and I like that it makes it basically impossible to send the wrong thing to the wrong person. You can't really copy and paste, uh, you know, a link that wasn't meant for a different identity or something like that. Um, I like the fact that I can compartmentalize and reduce the risk of any sort of crossover or uh, possible infection. I can spin up temporary VMs with one click to open links and attachments. Um, I think those are kind of my big points. So it sounds a lot like a usability thing almost. Like, yes, it extends into security and privacy, but you almost like the, the usability of it in a way. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, Cubes is actually like super overkill um, for my threat model. I probably don't need it, but for me, it really gives me a lot of peace of mind and really improves my workflow. All of these are incredibly powerful tools that enable people like you to be safer online. So take advantage of what they offer. They're incredible tools download them and play around, and I promise you're gonna learn a lot in the process and you're gonna enjoy them a lot. With that said, like most tools, you have to use them properly. If you wanna learn more about how to use these tools and how they fit into your privacy and security journey, check out our Become Anonymous guide right here. It's incredibly thorough and covers many of the projects that we talked about today. So we'll see you over there, and thanks again for watching. See you next time on TechLore.